Good morning and welcome. It is always a joy and a privilege to welcome you with our service. We're glad that you chose to come to worship with us today. It's hymn number 532. If you need a hymnal, stand if you would together. Let's sing together, Higher Ground. Thank you for being here today and give you the word of God in just a moment. But I'd like to have special prayer for anyone here who would like to come to the altar and pray. Maybe you're sick or you have someone in your family that's ill. And we don't normally do this. We pray, of course, but we don't have this altar call till later. But in my heart, I'd like to have it now. So anyone who wants to come to the altar with me, you may do so. The Bible teaches us that God answers prayer. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. And I cannot explain why God instructs us to call on him, but I can tell you that he does. And I want to be obedient to him. And so these people represent those that are, have a need in their heart or they know someone. And my need is, I'm, uh, my wife is back in the hospital and I certainly needs our prayers. And Father, we do come as a church body and these friends and loved ones and those in the audience, we're all praying for God to help us. Only God can meet our needs. I thank you for helping us in the past. I know you are God that hears and answer prayer, and these folks that are at the altar have a need or know someone with a need, and God, have mercy upon us. Bless my wife today, Lord. Help all who have problems and suffering and pain. and Just we seek your face, O oh God. Have mercy upon us. And yet, Father, we come to give you thanksgiving for your goodness. Oh, how good you are to all of us. We live and move and have our very being because of your goodness. God bless us, help us, receive our thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all. God bless you all. We do welcome those that visit with us and those who watch by television. Forest Home Baptist Church in Kilgore, Texas. I encourage everyone to uh, be faithful to your church home. If you don't have a church, come and visit us here at Forest Home. You're here, good singing, and every now and then a preacher will preach a good, decent sermon. We're glad that you're here. God bless you all. Matthew. Well, good morning. Um, a lot of y'all might have noticed there looks like there's a boarding pass or something in your bulletin this morning. Um, if you did not get one, I guess you did not grab a bulletin today. Let me explain that to you. This is for our student ministry. We have a mystery trip coming up. Um, the only thing I'm telling the kids is we're leaving this location. Um, so that's what that is about. It's August 10th. Any students that are um, completed um, sixth grade through 12th grade, um, you just have to sign up and pay for that. 
Um, it'll be a fun, fun day. Um, so don't miss out on that. And then let me tell you about one other exciting event that we have coming up. And this is one of my favorite things we will do every year. It's a thing called our Next Step Dinner. Um, you see that on the front of your bulletin. That is on August 9th. This is for our students that are coming into um, student, our student ministry. And it's a night to really just spend with the families and these kids and really just walk them through what student ministry is all about here and they answer questions and they get to know each other better. So if you have a sixth grade, going into sixth grade student or you know someone that is in that boat, invite them to this. It's gonna be an awesome, awesome time um, and it'll be a very helpful and beneficial time for these families. Thank you. Good morning, church. I just a couple things. Last night we had the uh, family uh, fun night. I just want to thank those of you who came out. Uh, those who you uh, did may not have been able to come out. Uh, just to let you know that there are going to be other events that are going to be coming up uh, throughout this year and then also into next year. Um, also on September the first is going to be Promotion Sunday, and during that time, we, I don't know if many of you have probably not been over to the uh, Children's Building, but we're doing a bunch of renovations to it. On September 1st, we're going to have an open house for that day. The first Sunday uh, breakfast is also going to be over there. So I encourage you to be over here on September the 1st just to see what we're doing over in the children's building. Um, and if you have any children, I just encourage you to bring them, uh, especially on that day. Thank you. I want to say thank you to the church family for allowing me and my wife to get away. Uh, we were gone last week, had a great time, went up and saw the ark and all that kind of stuff out there. So uh, thank you for the church family to allowing us as a staff to Take a little reprieve time from time to time. Uh, also, our budget sheets are out. Uh, they're on different places around the auditorium. We'll be voting on the budget in about two weeks. Uh, we as a Baptist church, we like to everybody know what we're doing and uh, let you know where your money is being spent. And you can pick those up. And again, we'll be voting on those in about two weeks. And then uh, in your bulletin, uh, you can see a Mother's Day Out program is gearing up. And uh, there's some donated things that they need there if you just look at that if you'd like to help with that and bring up those donations uh, here to the church and we'll collect those brother mark i also want to thank the church for your support and allowing me to tour with the centrymen the centrymen were founded in 1969 as we began the second century of the southern baptist convention uh, and it was originally made up of 100 ministers of music from around the nation. It is an auditioned choir. Uh, this past year, we celebrated our 50th, or this last week, our 50th anniversary at Centrum, and we actually had some of our charter members are still a part of this group. It is an auditioned choir made up of ministers of music, uh, Baptist people from colleges, uh, college professors, and so forth. Uh, and it was a wonderful tour. We did 14 concerts in 12 days in Waco and San Antonio and Dallas and Louisville and Abilene. Obviously, they didn't look at a map as we drove around through all of this down to Kerrville. Uh, and, but it was a, a great time. I thank you for the church for supporting me as we do this. It has been my, uh, I will say a privilege, I guess. I have been elected to be president of that group in 2020. Uh, so we ask for your prayers for that as we prepare uh, to lead the centrumen into the next 50 years. When I came to Forest Home, the very first hymn that I led is hymn number 561. Let's sing it together as we move into a time as we sing praises to God. It says, why do I sing about Jesus? Deep in my heart there's a gladness. Jesus has saved me from sin. Praise to his name, what a saint.
to say something about Brother Mark's trip. It is a great honor for Forest Home Baptist Church to have Brother Mark in that group. I want to tell you, so I know about all of that. And maybe you're not quite aware of the prestige of the centrymen, but we are honored that Mark is, uh, he's one of the big ones in there, and I mean that both ways. <laughs> we come now to receive the Lord's offering, our prayer, please. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we just thank you for uh, the opportunity we have to come and worship you uh, freely. Uh, we thank you for uh, the country we live in and the, the freedoms that we have and the men and women who have died in the past to ensure that we have those. Uh, Lord, we just thank you for uh, the staff and the hard work they put in uh, day to day, Lord. And uh, we just feel very, very blessed to be part of a church family uh, such as this. And we just pray that um, anybody we come in contact with, anybody that uh, we see or know and it's in our daily lives, Lord, that we can be uh, a light to them uh, and show your love by our actions and our words. Uh, and Lord, we just, uh, we love you and just please forgive us when we fail you. In Christ's name I pray, amen. A poll was taken several years ago about what was the favorite song of the church. And if there was a song that we had that was that is our theme song, it's this next song. I understand it was done just recently. Mitzi sang it just recently and did a wonderful job. Our pastor has shared many times that the definition of grace is God's acceptance of us on the grounds of what Christ did on the cross. And if Baptist had a theme song, this would be it. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that had saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. I was blind, but now I see. It was 
God's grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Now through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and his grace will lead me home. And when we've been there for ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. Saved, yes, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. I was blind, but now I see. Was blind, but. Now, now I see. Thank you, Brother Mark. Thank you, Mother Mark, and I want to congratulate our choir today. I love to see a full choir, and uh, thank you so much. Summertime. And we have people out every week, but of course, this is a wonderful <coughs> congregation today. God bless you Amen. for being here. Open your Bible this morning, please, to the third chapter of the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter number three. I want to quote from a great king, and then this quote that you will know, most of you, some of you, by heart. There are four words that I will use as a sermon title today and then preach to you the message that God has laid on my heart from the third chapter of Daniel. The great king was David. And David is in his 50s when he was led by the Holy Spirit of God to write the words that probably are the most popular words in the Old Testament, if not in the entirety of the Bible. They rival John 3, 16. You'll know them by heart, many of you. Listen to four words that I will give you as a title in just a moment. See if you can pick it out, just for fun. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me Beside the still waters, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord 
forever. What four words would you think God showed me? Well, I'll just break the suspense, all right? <laughs> Listen to these words. They're beautiful words. My cup runneth over. David said that. In the perhaps prime of life or past his prime, my cup runneth over. May I say to you that Jesus Christ expressed it this way. I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. My cup runneth over simply tells us that David, the king, the great warrior, the great singer, the great poet, my cup runneth over simply meant that David was saying, I am overflowing with joy and happiness and love and kindness, those things that come from God overflow my heart. My cup runneth over. I want to remind you that God wants you to live with an overflowing heart. It's as simple as that. When I look at Daniel chapter 3, I find these three Hebrew children. I don't have time to read all of this. I want to read you some of the main verses. You remember that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was three score cubit, the breadth of six cubit. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon, 90 feet high, 9 feet wide, golden image. And then the king gave the command that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, all that stuff, I can't even say it all, all kinds of music, fall down and worship the golden image. Now God tells us in the first commandment, we shall have no gods before him. The second commandment is we shall not make an image an idol. But the king made an image. He made an idol. And he commanded that everyone under his jurisdiction should fall down and worship the 90 feet tall golden image. Pick it up in verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego I always like those names. Shadrach, Meshach. S.M. Lockridge, the great black preacher, was named Shadrach, Meshach, Lockridge. I met him. I was invited to come to an office one time, a pastor's study, and Dr. Lockridge was standing there. And he was to preach that night. And the pastor said, I want you to go in there and meet Dr. Lockridge and entertain him a while. I said, entertain him? one of the greatest preacher ever lived on God's earth. I walked in the office and he said to me, I'm Shadrach Meshach Lockridge. I said, I'm Earl Wayne Duggins. He just laughed. While he was in seminary, his house burned down. The next day, the professor said, this, has, this is not Shadrach Meshach Lockridge, it is Shadrach Nochak Lockridge. I got a bang out of that. Well, these three Hebrew children answered and said, this is verse 16, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. In other words, we have no anxiousness about answering thee, O king. If it be so, that is, if you put us in the fiery furnace, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, I love those words, if not, be it known unto thee, O king, we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. And you know the rest of the story. The sound of music came, and the devil always has some music for you. And you young people, better be very careful as to what you listen to. 
The devil has music out there that stirs. You be careful. And he commanded the music to be played, and they watched Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they did not bow down. They did not worship a golden image. How foolish it is to bow before anything that's not the Lord God of the Bible. And the king commanded the fire to be greater than it's ever been. And the strong men in Babylon threw them in. And the fire was so great that the men that threw them in were killed instantly. And the king came and looked in. And I love this verse. He said, did I not throw three men bound into the fiery furnace? But I see... Four men loose walking in the midst of the flames. Well, that is a sensational story. But I want to talk to you today about special spiritual lessons from this sensational story. Remember now the title, My Cup Runneth Over. And learning these lessons, I... Trust the Holy Spirit will help our cups to run over with love and joy and peace and all those things that go into being what God wants us to be. Well, it's a pretty simple sermon. When you study this, you have to be reminded that no matter where you are, You must stand for God. And when you do stand for God, you're going to have those things that go into the testimony my cup runneth over. Think about that. Sometimes people say, well, if I were over there, I could live a Christian life. If I were not in this city, I could live a Christian life. You know, if things were different, if circumstances were different, if events in my life had not occurred, I would surely live a better Christian life. But the point is, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in Babylon in an evil society under the command of a king, but I am telling you, they did not bow then or burn. No matter what your circumstance is in life, you can live for God. In fact, often it is during those difficult days that you have a better appreciation for the Lord your God. I'm accused sometimes of preaching too much out of Acts 16, but I want you to think about it. Here's Paul and Silas on a missionary journey. They come to the Macedonia, the chief city of Philippi, and they witness to a lady named Lydia, who was a good woman, just unsaved, and they lead her to Jesus Christ, and a few events happen, and all of a sudden, after this high moment of leading these women to Christ and probably others, they found themselves beaten with many stripes, cast into the innermost part of the prison, their feet and their hands in stocks. You're talking about a high moment to a low moment. We might think a low moment. But you know what happened at midnight? The Bible says that Paul and Silas began to pray and sing praises unto God. Why did they do that? I'll tell you exactly why. The cup was running over. That's right. That's right. I know I'm right. Their cup was running over. And listen to me. I've had this thought. If Paul were to be able some way to come and stand right here today, and I would say to Paul, Paul, tell me some of the greatest moments you ever had. He said, well, one of them for sure was when I was in Philippi, and they beat the socks out of me. But oh, we began to pray, and we began to sing, and God shook that prison. And the jailer was saved. Angel Martinez believed every one of them were saved. All in the prison were saved because they did not escape. Well, a great resurrection occurred then. You can be going through a difficult time, a time of crisis, but my dear friend, stand for God. 
Just know that he's a God that wants to run your cup over with joy and happiness and peace. Here's another spiritual lesson. That there is significance in the fact that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were united in their purpose. There's something about spiritual unity that brings an overflowing heart of love and joy. Spiritual unity. Uh, behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to gather together in unity. And the Bible speaks about a threefold cord being stronger and two are better than one. Spiritual unity. You know, we must have unity in the staff of a church. You know, uh, Brother Pat and Mark and I have been together about a hundred years, it seems like. He was completely black-headed. I thought his name was Martinez when I met him with that black hair. But we've been together a long time, and people have asked me, how do you keep a church staff? How, how is it that you guys have been together 30 years or so? I said, Look, that's easy. We love and respect each other. Church staff must be unified. Brother Pat and Mark would tell you both. And, of course, we love Matthew and uh, what's the other boy's name? Ryan. <laughs> we love them dearly. We're blessed that they're here working with us, and they fit so well into our staff. And uh, we could not do without them. But I'm telling you, they'll all tell you, the pastor lets me do the job. I don't know anything about music. I love music, but that's his job. You know, you, you've just got to have a lot of common sense and love each other and just seek to do God's will. You'll have unity. The deacon body must be unified under the leadership of the pastor. A church must be pastor-led, deacon-served, committee-organized, congregationally approved. And uh, thank God for our wonderful deacons. And they're very supportive of our staff. And we don't have fussing and fighting. I want, you need to know that. Uh, unity, unity is necessary in church growth. Listen, you need to be unified. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had unity and then do you know this that they served our God whom we serve Baptist you will never find never come to the place where you can say my cup runneth over until you come to the place that you know you are doing the will of God and serving God from the bottom of your heart the best you know how by following the instructions of the Word of God. When I was 17, young people, I joined the United States Marine Corps. You know what they did about the second day? They gave me a little book of instructions, the Marine Corps Guidebook. And that buck sergeant said, you read it and you learn it and you study it and you learn it. And I said, yes, sir, he scared me to death. U.S. rifle, caliber 30, M1, shoulder weapon, gas-operated, clip-fed, semi-automatic weapon. Chamber pressure, 50,000 pounds per square inch, muzzle velocity, 26, 28,000 uh, feet. I mean, I can roll that stuff out. Instructions. Listen. The Bible is our instruction book. Read it. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. The entrance of thy word giveth light. We can have joy and peace no matter what comes our way as we lean on the word of God. Are you studying it? Do you know it? If they put you in a blank room with a piece of paper and a pencil and said write down ten Bible verses... Could you do it? Now, I'm not browbeating you. 
I'm just encouraging you as I know how to do it. Know your Bible. The day will come you face a fiery furnace. Life is fire. Fire of pain and sorrow and disappointment and all these things. We all face them sooner or later and many more than others. But I am telling you, you will have an overflowing joy when that Word of God is in you. And you can just lean on the Word of God. And one spiritual lesson, again, is that these young men served the living God. And the Bible is the book that teaches us about serving God And they serve together. And there's something wonderful about service. I've been asked, why are you going there and preach on Sunday? Your wife's in the hospital. She's very bad shape. Well, number one, this is where (laughs) I'm supposed to do. And God speaks to my heart and gives me these messages. And I find great joy and peace and comfort in doing what God tells me to do. Just serving him. And you'll find joy and peace and you'll have an overflowing heart when you begin to serve God. These young men stood for righteousness. They had faith that unified them. Easy to understand, a simple truth. You'll never have overflowing joy apart from faith in the living God. They believed God. Now, normally we talk about their faith. It was in the ability of God. Our God is able. Do you have faith in God's ability? I'm leaning on God's faith and God's ability to give healing to my sweetheart. And you'll come a time in your life, and you may be there right now, you need to know that God has the ability to fix the problem that you have. Maybe on the job, maybe at In the home, whatever it is, God can do it. God is able. Our God is an able God. Amen. Our God is able. And then they said, He will deliver us. They had faith in God's willingness. You see, they they studied. They knew the heart of God. And they just, in their soul, they felt like God was willing to deliver them. But they said, but if not, and that's a big statement because that shows their faith in God's wisdom. I want to tell you, that's higher ground faith right there. But if not, we don't intend. We will go to the fiery furnace to our death. That's all right with us. We are not going to bend. We're not going to bow to a stupid golden image. I added stupid. (laughs) And they were men of great faith. Now, of course, you know the story. They were cast into the fiery furnace. My theme is still my cup runneth over. All right, listen to it. Listen to me very carefully. In the midst of the fiery furnace was Jesus Christ. There was a fourth man, and I've studied the Bible, and studied the Hebrew text, studied all enough to tell you that was Jesus. And the Bible in the King James says that like unto the Son of God, friend, it was the Son of God. And know this. He is a companion to the committed. He's a companion to the committed. When you, when you are really committed to Jesus Christ, he said, I will never, ever leave you nor forsake you. In your darkest, most hurtful moments, he doesn't leave you. He's a companion to the committed. Do you know what the Bible scholars and the people that study church are telling us nowadays? That this generation of people, young people, really don't even know the meaning of the term commitment. That frightens me. We need to understand that commitment is giving our heart lock, stock, and barrel to the Lord. I'm committed to Jesus. I am committed. I committed my life to him when I was a boy. 
when I got a Marine boot camp and a lot of them went down to Mexico to do you know what? I didn't do it. I went to church. Not because I'm better, but because there lives one within me to whom I was committed that gave me a want to to worship. Yes. Commitment, commitment. Commit yourself to God. And listen, we need commitment in our homes. We ought to be committed to our wives and to our husbands and to our children to raise them up in the nurture and the admonition of God. We ought to be committed to America. See that flag over there? I love that flag and what it stands for. There is no nation on earth like America. Amen. We ought to be committed Americans. We need to study the issue, and we need to vote. And we, I can tell you a lot of things, but you didn't come to hear about politics. But I am telling you, friend, we better stand up and be committed to the belief that there is a God in heaven and that America is a Christian nation. Amen. Now, John Wesley said, Give me ten men who know nothing but God, hate nothing but sin, and love nothing but souls, commitment and will change the world. And it's people that are committed that make a mark. I have had the privilege of being a friend with Earl Campbell. He didn't just win the Heisman because of talent. He won it because he got committed to doing what they told him to do. They called him in before his senior year and said, Earl, we think you have a legitimate chance. And he told me all that he went through. I can't remember it all, but he said, you'll get up at 6.30 in the morning or 5.30 and you'll do a 1,000 push-ups and you'll run those many miles and you'll do all this. Then you'll eat breakfast and do it again. And you've got to have such a strong body when they hit you three times, you refuse to go down. You, and he committed himself to that. And I'm telling you, my dear friend, commitment takes discipline and takes a lot of things. But you can do it. Be committed to God. Be committed to your church. Be committed to your family. Be committed to America. Amen. Well, not only in that fiery furnace, they found the fourth man who was there waiting on them, by the way, a commandment companion to the committed he is a uh, preserver of the persecuted yes it is preserver of the persecuted there's no doubt about it when you begin to live for God you will have some persecution now we don't have a lot of it here in America in this part of America let me rephrase that others are all over the world Christians are dying for the cause of Jesus we can worship God. We're not intimidated by the law. We, our police chief is a fine Christian. But there are places where people are persecuted. But Jesus Christ knows how to preserve us. I, I, I love Billy Graham. God bless his heart. What an example to all preachers was Dr. Graham of integrity and Bible preacher and Holy Spirit led and so on. And I, I saw him interviewed one time and they said, what about your uh, bodyguards? Do you have any and how many and so on? He said, well, I have reasonable care, but I'm convinced that God can protect me. And God will preserve me till my time is up. And that's exactly what happened. And he's a preserver of the persecuted. Now, at the schoolhouse, and you stand for Jesus, or on that job, when you stand for Jesus, and you face some persecution, don't sweat it. I'd rather be in the will of God and persecuted than out of the will of God and be a king somewhere. He's a freedom giver to the bound. That's one of my favorite parts of the story. The old king looked in. And by the way, kings always look. <laughs> and the king looked in and he said, I, I, I thought we put three men bound. 
I see four men loose walking. They weren't limping. They weren't jumping about as they they being scarred. They were walking, and when they came out, they didn't even have the smell of smoke on them. The fourth man, the freedom giver to the bound. Do you know someone that's bound in some kind of sin? Or maybe a, a believer that's bound in some kind of depression or that type of thing. Listen, Jesus Christ can give you freedom. He loves you. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. He's a preacher to the lost. You see, those people were worshipers of fire. They worshiped fire God. And now, our Lord Jesus didn't begin the fire, but he controlled the fire. Amen? And listen. Fiery furnaces happen, but the one who controls this universe is still on his throne of government. I've never had to worry about that. I know people that can't sleep because of what's going on in Korea and this, that, and other. Lay your head down and sleep. God's on the throne. Amen. Amen. And he's a preacher. We're talking now about my cup runneth over. I don't want to get too far from that. Reminding you, your cup can run over when you understand that, uh, that he is committed to us who are committed. He's our companion and uh, he preserves us. Your cup will run over when you know that he gives freedom and when he preaching to the lost by controlling the sun that comes up and the moon and the stars. God does all of that. And he's a preacher to the saved. Yes, he is. You see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if they could tell you God is God all the time, amen. We need to understand that your cup can run over when you understand no matter where you are, no matter what the doctor might say, no matter what circumstances may come and go, I am telling you there's a God on this throne. Amen. And he preaches, I love you. What did Jesus build on that cross? What did Jesus the carpenter build with a cross? Someone said he built a great sign that says, I love you. He built a bridge at which lost men can come to God. And that bridge also is where God comes at our moments of greatest need and manifest himself. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Oh, David said, my cup runneth over. And I stand before you today saying, my cup runneth over because of the word of the living God, the fellowship of the saints, the, the blessed Holy Ghost of God and the fact that Jesus Christ never leaves us. Would you bow with me for prayer, please? Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed and the choir is standing in preparation of our little song of invitation. And we want to invite you today in just a moment. We'll stand and sing and we will invite you to come to Jesus Christ. Some of you have never become Christians. They may be a little girl, 10, 12, or a little boy, 8 or 9, or whomever you might be, that you've never given yourself to God, to the Lord Jesus. Come as you are to Jesus today. You get up from your seat. Tell Mother, Dad, I want to give my life to Jesus. You come. Maybe an adult here today that you've never come to Christ you may come today. I will not embarrass you. You come today. Some need a church home. Indeed, everyone needs a church home. You may come today. Some of you have been saved, but you know, you've never followed Jesus in believer's baptism. You need to come and we'll set up a time, your convenience, that you follow Jesus. Jesus himself was baptized. 
you come today. The altar is open. Father, have thy will be done. We've tried to present Jesus, the one who helps us to testify. My cup runneth over. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll stand, please, and you come. And if I can read, this is uh, Nathan Doberly, who accepted the Lord at R.A. Camp. Amen. And he comes back in his profession of faith, and we will, uh, of course, counsel him Father, and he will be baptized. Those in favor, say amen. amen. And uh, this grandmother with him, and uh, one of our blessed members, and we appreciate you guys come and stand here, please. Come by and... Tell old Nathan he's a good-looking boy like the preacher. <laughs> and uh, give him the right hand of fellowship. And we're proud of him. We're proud of our RA program. And some of you supported the RA program and sent these kids to camp. Amen. Heaven results. So thank you. Be back tonight. What time, Pat? Five o'clock. You awake? He's awake. Be back at 5 tonight, and we'll have a great time in the name of Jesus. Eric, come up here, my man. Here's a good-looking guy that's in our cottage class, and he even talked to the class the other day. Would you dismiss us in prayer, please? <clears throat> Dear Lord, we give you thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this morning. Uh, thank you, Lord, for Brother Buddy as he was uh, preaching the Word and uh, Thank you, God, for speaking through him, and uh, I pray, Lord, as we leave this place, you keep us uh, safe and uh, bring us back this afternoon. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen.